Look at Joe Rogan uh, right before we got started. What'd you say? Thank you. No, he came up to me. He was like, my bad. I was like, yeah, bro, man. You had to do that. He was like, I mean, no disrespect. So it was all good, man. It was all love. Uh, I know Joe, um, he calls a lot of fights. I'm going to fight a lot of fights. So um, we squash our, our beef, per se. But I like Joe. He came up to me. He said something. He said he wanted to say something in private and, and said he didn't mean any disrespect by it. And I was like, well, you know, I got to talk a little smack. And at the end of it, I told him he does have some crazy fans, man. I was like, your Twitter following is nuts, boy. They were going to murder me out there. I didn't realize I started riot, kind of. And he kind of laughed about it. So it was fun. Star, uh, yesterday, obviously, uh, you missed Wade. Can you explain kind of what happened uh, in that situation? Um, you know, a lot of people like to hear it, but we, we were doing good. We were The weight was coming off real smooth. I was sweating real good. And, you know, I'm a female every once a month we kind of have a problem so um, it just kind of the timing was bad and and I kind of had to make a decision for myself and with the team I had cut with me uh, on whether we wanted to try to push it anymore and risk getting sent to the hospital again because I knew if I got sent to the hospital the fight was off completely so I kind of just had to make a few calls and, and Roxanne thankfully was was cool about it um, paid chalk coughed up my 20 percent and, and the fight was still on so we got pretty close but you know commission had their eye on me pretty closely and I don't want to do anything to jeopardize the actual fight fans uh, booed you a little bit yesterday at Wayans and a little bit and I saw you kind of making your, uh, do you do you mind that? It almost seems like you, you relish it a little bit, you're kind of you're kind of enjoying yourself. Yeah, why not? I'm having a blast, yo. I just fought at Madison Square Garden. I had a tough fight. I'm all, you know, it was a, it was a wonderful fight against a wonderful opponent. My family got to come out. I had a lot of family who's never been able to watch me fight at all because of the travel. Um, I had a blast. Yeah, a couple of people booed me, but a lot of people cheered me too. So um, at the end of the day, a lot more people know me than they did about three weeks ago. So I'm happy about it. I'm having fun. Is it a case where it's almost like cheer or boo, at least you're paying attention, at least you know who I am now? Absolutely, absolutely. A lot of people know who I am. Thanks to Joe, a lot of people know who I am now. <laughs> Thanks to me missing by a pound, a lot of people know who I am now. <laughs> you know, it is what it is, Joe. But, you know, what's most important to me, which, you know, I kind of do poke at fans, I kind of do kind of, eh, go ahead, boo me. You know, I have a little relish in it. But what's most important to me is the is my closeness circle. My coaches love me, my family loves me, my daughter loves me. Um, so all, all of that's what's really important to me. And, and I've been blessed by God today, so we had a good time. But a couple people booed, yeah, why not? You're going to tune in to watch me next time. I hate her. I hope she gets her head knocked in. But you're going you you to watch the fight. So it is what it is. Star, any concerns that, you, great win, but that because you missed weight a couple times now, UFC might not give you the title shot? Oh, yeah, that's a concern for sure. But um, it's been a crazy what three weeks it feels like the longest shortest three weeks of my life and I had to really you know block all of that out and it, of course you want to sit and think well what's going to happen after this but nothing happens after this if I don't win tonight so I focused 1000% on on Roxanne tonight um, and so what happens after tonight we'll, we'll just have to see because it's not entirely up to me you know we got to talk to um, you know the UFC brass and you know I worked really closely with the PI and they did a fantastic job reshaping my body um, over the last nine months, so we just got to see what's going to happen. Yeah. Is there a chance that, that bantamweight could be in the future for you at some point? I'm sure at some point. Um, you know, to be, to be perfectly honest, I was a bantamweight before the Tough 26 was announced. And I was like, I can get 10 more pounds off. It's going to suck, but I can do it. And, I, and flyweight's always been a tough cut for me. Um, but my, my ultimate goal has always been to be UFC champion. That's, that's what it's been. And before there was a flyweight division, I always imagined I was going to be bantamweight champion. So then the flyweight division came in. I thought through the ultimate fighter that would be the quickest route to the belt. Um, I've hit a couple of bumps. <laughs> so I don't think being, you know, bantamweight is, is an option for sure. Absolutely. Stop. Talking about the fight, uh, how did you feel the fight went today? Uh, you controlled her a lot of times on the ground, uh, but you kind of got stuck in the half and the full guard and, and then the, and the half guard. So, uh, any thoughts on the fight itself? Oh, I thought the went, I, I thought the fight went fantastically well. Um, I know Roxy is tough, man. She's like a freaking zombie boy. You got a freaking deer. I hit her with everything I got. She just kept coming. Um, when when I took her down in the first round, I knew I knew she was active, and it kind of concerned me in the back of my head, like. You know, I hope this isn't giving a round away because I did feel like I dominated the rounds and I wasn't able to really open up on my ground a time like I wanted to. Um, I think she reversed me at one point, so I just knew I really had to listen to my coaches and stay diligent, stick to the game plan, just keep keep piecing her up. In the third, you know, I kind of we all kind of was like, let's let's keep it on the feet and, and really pull away here. And then if it goes to the ground, it goes to the ground because she was really good defensively off off of her back. I know her back, her striking is a little bit awkward. 
Um, how did you feel the second time around seeing her uh, in the stand-up? Did you already feel that you had the advantage coming in on the, the stand-up? Yeah, I felt like I had advantage on the stand-up. I think her, her stand-up is awkward enough, it tricks a lot of people. And I wasn't going to let her trick me the first time, I wasn't going to let her trick me the second time. Just because it's awkward doesn't mean a punch is a punch, you get punched in the face. So <laughs> no matter how goofy you look, <laughs> it's going to score. So um, I knew she had an awkward style. Um, she she pressed a, a, a little bit more in this fight than I think the last one. But I was really confident in my hands. I've been really confident in my striking since I've been in New Jersey. So. Um, and my grappling, my grappling, my grappling. Like I said, I didn't get to open up as much as I wanted to on the ground today, but um, I felt like it really opened up on the feet and, and kind of displayed what I could do. You were talking about the last few weeks and how there, I mean, there were a lot of moving parts to what your fight was going to be. Did you find it? Did you find any extra impact in how that went in training? Um, I'm sorry. One more time. All right, so you had a, like you were talking about the last few weeks, and there were a lot, and there were a lot of moving parts leading up to tonight. Did you find that that had any impact on your training in camp? Oh yeah, kind of. Yeah, um, it, it was a short camp, really. Like I, I thought I was fighting Valentina five weeks, and then you know before you know it, you know that was off, and then we got another fight. Kind of, it was really only like two and a half, three weeks of actual training. Um, so you know the ups and downs, the, it, you know it's, it's tough. You just kind of gotta go through. I've got a good coaching staff, and they kind of don't let me get too distracted. At the end of the day. Um, when you step your foot into training, you just got to focus on training. It's hard to think about anything else when you've got guys like Mark Henry and Jamal Patterson and Carl Almeida pushing you and making you work hard and doing things like that. So um, the only thing that really affected the training was it was really outside of training, making sure I wasn't on Twitter too much, <laughs> <laughs> making sure I wasn't too distracted. Um, that was kind of tough. But when it comes to being on the mats, I mean, that's why I started training in the first place because once I'm on the mats, like, nothing else matters. I'm just in my zone, man, having a good time. So. We just wanted to push as much cardio as we could in, in three weeks' notice and put on a show. What are your Twitter mentions looking like uh, right about now? Boy, I had to, I had to, I had to, um, <laughs> I stayed off, and I stayed off the social media like the last 48 hours. Um, especially, uh, <laughs> except for the shrugging tweet. my coach, tweet. except for the shrugging tweet. That was when I got my phone taken away. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, give me this. I was like, ah. I think I flipped a couple of birds to Ben Askren and Jessica I too right before. They were like, give me this. Stay off your phone. Um, no, I haven't. I haven't. I haven't been on them. Um, last time I checked my social media before the fight, I get a lot of love on my DMs. I guess people don't like to say out loud that they like it. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, Psh, you're awesome. Like, but my comments are like, screw you, f you, you suck. I'm like, your dad sucks. <laughs> but no, it's like, yeah, social media, social media. I mean, whatever. I have fun. Whatever. You can so, be